Owen Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video I am going to give you a navigation of our Ableton Pro Pack for the Stream Deck Plus device. Now currently this is only available on the Windows system, hopefully in the future we'll be able to get a Mac put out. Now I'm going to go through all the different things that this profile has contained in it with a special emphasis on the, uh, the dials themselves. We'll be looking at how you can use the dials to control your panning, your sends, the volume of your tracks, as well as being able to access quick control functions, and I'll show you how that works. Also with this profile, I'll be detailing how you can program your own keys very quickly to be able to control any parameter in Ableton, including VST plugin parameters. So at this point, I'm going to assume that you have Follow the PDF instruction manual that is included in your download and you've gone through the setup procedure, or you've looked at the installation video. Either way, I'll assume that you've got everything up and running and installed and you've gone through the process of linking all the individual profiles to each other. So when you do, this is the main page that we're going to start on, this is the main profile. You'll no doubt be aware that these keys up along here, when pressed, open up the different profiles contained in this suite. And you'll also be aware that using a Stream Deck Plus device that you navigate different pages in a profile by swiping the dial screen left or right. So there's page two of this profile and page three. Now that we're on page three, there's an important key on this page that helps to make everything work in this whole suite of profiles. And that is our script key that is up here. So by pressing this, that is gonna launch our script and enable a lot of the features that this profile has. So when we press this, we hear the tones and we see on the bottom of our system tray, this is the indication that our script is now active. You always wanna make sure that you launch the script if you uh, start your Ableton session and start using the Stream Deck profile and find that commands are not responding, this is the first place you're gonna check. You may have forgotten to start the, uh, the script. All right, so one more swipe goes back to the first of the main page. Up along the top, you'll see we have our file, edit, and view, menu functions, and you can explore these and the different things that, that they uh, provide to you. But if we slip down here to add track, for example, this, as the name suggests, allows us to add different tracks and gives us parameters with which to modify those tracks, as well as giving us some quantize functions. We also have some options here. These are various options that you can take advantage of. Transport, as the name suggests, allow us to control the playback of our currently loaded project. And we have a handy feature here called Rename. This allows us to very quickly rename any tracks that we choose. So let's say I'm on track three, I'm gonna highlight track three, and that's where I'm gonna put a vocal. It's as simple as that. It's just a very quick and easy way for us to label our tracks. Let's swipe to page two here. You're gonna see we have a pads profile. Now the pads here, these pads work the way you would normally expect uh, a pad system to work. We can uh, swipe over to get one octave higher. So just a handy utility to turn your stream deck into a pad controller. Now on the first page, you can see we've got some custom keys here. And we have a whole profile on custom keys. I'm gonna demonstrate that in much more detail in a few minutes. Now next one over, we have the FX control profile. What this allows us to do is we can access through quick controls, the first eight parameters of any of our currently chosen instruments and effects. Now I'll show you what I mean. I got a dub delay loaded up here and without doing anything else, just starting to rotate the dials that are presented here, I can start controlling the parameters in this dub delay. 
You can see I'm now adjusting kick, which is the first parameter in this instrument. Now if I want to adjust rim one, which is the next one over, this is where I'm going to show you a new feature in our Stream Deck Plus dial uh, that, that we have introduced. And that is you can see that we have eight uh, icons along the strip here. So we are, have the ability to assign two different actions to a particular dial. So right now we're on A. If I just press on the dial strip, B becomes active. And now I, when I rotate the dial, that is now controlling the second parameter in this instrument. Click back. We're now controlling the first again. So that follows true with all of the dials here. This will adjust the third parameter. Clicking will adjust the fourth. Clicking adjust the third, etc. So the quick controls allow us, if the plugin developer has written it specifically for quick controls, these will work for you. Now there are occasions in which the plugin developers have not mapped it for quick controls, but you can easily adjust that and program them yourself. So I have an air pusher effect here. And you'll see if I try and uh, I'll activate it here. So it's the active panel. And I rotate the first dial. Well, it, it's, it's now controlling chance, which is our fifth parameter. I then control our third here, and it's uh, adjusting offset, which is our second control. So it's all kind of mixed up. Now we can easily remap these so that they make sense to our dials. And I'll show you how to do that. So how we get into this is we're going to right click, we're going to select group, and then we're going to click on the macro button here. And then we're going to click map. And this allows us to uh, assign any one of these dials to these particular macros. So let's say we're going to click on our first dial here and we're going to say map, second, map, third, map, and the fourth map. We'll just do the first four here. We'll turn map off and we can close this panel down. Now when we go to our quick controls, you can see we are adjusting one, the second, the third, click on the fourth. We now have the logical control of those effects. So if you find a plugin that isn't corresponding to these quick controls, you can quickly program them yourself in that way. Also in the effects controls, we have some more custom keys that we can assign. We're going to get to that in just a second. Now let's go into MIDI Remote. Now this allows us to control the first four tracks in our project. So if we go through and you see we have our usual transport controls here. If we go here, this, this page will allow us to control the uh, parameters of the currently selected track and our master. You can see just we can use the, uh, the buttons here to go up and down to control our master. You see our master volume moving up and down. And our currently selected track, we can control its volume as well. The same thing with the panning. The panning will adjust the currently selected track or the master over here. Now, of course, we've got dials on the string deck plus. It'd be a shame if we didn't take advantage of them, and we certainly do. So adjusting the dial here is going to adjust our volume of our currently selected track. And you can see we get the live update on the dial strip and the buttons themselves. And the master works the same way. We also have access to our sends. Click over to adjust send B. Adjust our track panning. Or adjust our master panning. And you can see all the keys update. Swipe one over, we have the mutes and solos for the first four tracks. So we can make those adjustments and we can control the first four track volume faders with these dials. Next page over gives us the panning for each of these. 
and we still have the volume, but it also gives us the panning for tracks one to four. And the final page, this gives us volume and panning all on one page. So if you want to control panning on track number one, adjust the volume on track number two, adjust the volume on track three, or adjust the pan, etc. You have those available. Now let's take a look at the custom utility. We've been talking about it, uh, about how you can program your, your own keys to adjust any parameter that you like. It even works on uh, VST parameters. So let me show you how that works. All right, so I've got my Analog Lab VST open here. And let's say I want to control my, my cutoff value here. Now you can, of course, use the dials to make this adjustment. If I hover over any parameter and start adjusting the custom dial here, you'll see that we can control it. And then if I move the mouse over to this third parameter, I can control that. So I am able to control anything that I'm hovering over. However, with the C keys, I can make it a hard assignment that I don't need to move the mouse. Pressing the key will move the mouse for me. Let me show you how that works. So let's just hover our mouse over cutoff, holding control on the keyboard and pressing the C1 key is going to assign that position to that key. Holding control, you hear a beep. Let's move our mouse over. And now anytime that I want to control the cutoff parameter, I press C and I can adjust. Now I can do this on any parameter. Let's say I want delay mix to be on the second one. I hold control on the keyboard, hit C2. And now I can bounce, I can go C1, adjust, C2, adjust. And I can quickly make those adjustments. So as you can see, we have plenty more custom keys that we can assign. And you, of course, can get into Stream Deck and label these so they make sense to you. And we have third page. So we have plenty of pages here of custom keys for you to access. And as we showed you as we went through this, we showed you there are some other sections that also contain custom keys. You can assign those there as well. And whenever you assign these custom keys, they will stay in place even if you shut down the computer and come back. They will remember these assignments that you've made until they're overwritten. It's because these assignments are written in a small any file that gets saved beside the script. Now I'm going to show you uh, what we call our Sideshow FX Push. So what this does, this kind of simulates the Ableton Live Push uh, software and hardware that uh, you might be familiar with. So on the first page we have some regular transport controls. But on uh, the following pages we have some assignment uh, tracks that reflect what is being shown in our scene box. Now you'll see that we have what appears to be some offline keys. This is generally, uh, you may find this, but that's just because we haven't started uh, the playback of our particular um, track. We just, If we just start playing here, you can see our, our uh, graphics come alive. It needs to receive that information. Now we can use our track box and our, and our scene box to select different parts of our session. And we can audition different parts of our scene. So I think you get the idea of how you can move around your session using the session box and accessing the different instruments and tracks, turning them on and off to audition different sounds and uh, styles that you want to try and adopt. Under our third page, we, I just want to quickly show you the uh, beats per minute that we've got here. Uh, this, allow us, uh, this will allow us to uh, tap out the beat per minute that we would like. 
just by pressing the key in a particular rhythm. So if we play our session here, you can see it's showing us we're around 128 beats per minute. If we want to slow this down, I'm just going to press that, that key in a slower interval. And it slows down our beats per minute. I can do the reverse and speed it up. So it's a handy little feature. Now you also see that we've got three more profiles that are uh, that we can link to here: plugins, instruments, and effects. Quickly, I'll show you that. If you go to plugins, for example, uh, we'll get over to the second page here because we can see we've got some um, pre-made uh, keys that allow us to launch these plugins. Now, of course, you'll need to have these plugins installed on your system. If you don't, pressing the button won't really do anything. But for example, I have Analog Lab on this system. So if I select a track and click on Analog Lab, it will load that VST for me. I've also provided those quick effects controls that we showed you earlier. But you go back to, uh, and we also have some custom keys as well, but you go back to the page one, we also have some blank keys here. These are left here intentionally. If you want to include your own plugins that we have not included here on the second page, you can insert your own. Now quickly show how to do that. So if you double click on any one of these keys and click on um, the system text, the blank the second one here, if you add in the text of the name of the plugin that you want to add in, and make sure it's exactly the way it appears in Ableton, then it will launch that plugin. And I want to do say Piano V2. I would then also want to label this so I know what it is I'm pressing. Now we go into Ableton, we select a track, it launches the VST that we've assigned for it. All right, so that's one way that you can quickly build your own plugin launchers. So if we're going to instruments, you can see it's much the same thing. We can uh, click on any one of these and it's going to launch that particular instrument for us. So click on drum rack, it launches drum rack. And we also have provided some blank keys here for you to include your own instruments that you don't see here and some custom keys. And the effects is the same thing. We can apply an effect with the push of a button or you can assign your own. So back to the first page here. So let's just get a little more detail over our dials here. Our dials, you'll, you'll see that some dials have two icons sitting above the dial. That's because you can select what command occurs just by pressing on the left or the right side of the icons above the dial. So right now we can see that we can control the panning control of the currently selected track. Now by pressing the right side, we are now controlling the panning of the master. Clicking back over, now we're on the panning of the selected track. You'll also notice that there is a small dial stack icon that indicates that there are more actions that you can take advantage of by pressing into the dial. Pressing the dial, we now see we have two more functions that we can take advantage of, and this is send for our currently selected track. This is send B of our currently selected track, clicking on send A of our currently selected track and pressing in takes us back to where we were. Now the next dial over we can see that we also have two icons associated here and that allows us to control the volume of the currently selected track or clicking on the right side allows us to control the volume of the master. Now the third dial is an AI dial that allows us to control any parameter 
that we click on with this dial. So let's just click on any dial here. We'll click on the panning of our third track here. And with that selected, that allows us to control that. And we can move our mouse way over here and we're still able to control that particular track because it's selected. This is true even with uh, VSTs or any of your effect parameters or instrument parameters. If we select them, we can control it with this dial. Now you'll see that this is part of a dial stack, so by pressing in, we the dial turns into a custom dial. Now the difference with this is that we don't need to select anything first. We can just hover over, and wherever we're hovering over, it will adjust for us. So I can just keeping my one hand on the dial and my other hand on the mouse and moving where I want to go, this will make all the adjustments that I need. And clicking back takes us back to the AI dial. Of course, we have on the fourth dial our jog, scroll, our range selector, and our zoom. Now the next page over, this allows us to control our beats per minute. You can see we can adjust up and down. We can adjust quantization, the AI controller again, and this allows us to move our track box horizontally and our track box vertically. The third page over, beats per minute again, but we can also select our tracks with this time. So that's it in a nutshell. Please uh, look through the PDF uh, that's provided in, in the pack. We uh, get into detail about where everything is laid out. Hopefully this pack will help you in your sessions. As always, thanks very much for supporting us, and we'll talk to you soon.